In this lesson, we're going to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. Okay, so these are the problems we're going to be working on today. And so what I'd like for you to do is to pause the video and copy these 10 problems down and actually start working on them. And that way, as we go along, um, you'll sort of be checking your answers. Okay, so when you're ready, um, just restart the video. Okay, let's get started uh, here with number one. This is a logarithmic equations. You should know that with equations, your goal is to solve for x. So when we have a log on one side, and a, as we do here, and a constant on the other, uh, you can rewrite the equation in exponential form uh, to solve for x. So let's go ahead and do that. Recall the snail-like pattern we learned in class. Starting with the base, it would be 2 raised to the third power equals x plus 1. Again, 2 raised to the third power equals x plus 1. So on the right side, let's go ahead and solve that exponent. We know that 2 raised to the third power equals 8. Last step to solving for x is to do what? Yes, that's correct. Subtract 1 from each side, and x equals 7. Now, you know that you, anytime you have an equation, if you're not sure about your answer, you can always plug your answer back into the equation and if it leaves you with a true statement, then that is your proof that that is your solution. So let's go ahead and check. We're only going to check this first problem. And then from here on out, we're just going to simply solve them. But I want to show you um, how you can check your work. So in the original um, equation, if we remove the x and replace it with 7, our solution is going to look like so. Let's go ahead and solve inside uh, the parentheses. Uh, 7 plus 1 is 8. And now, again, we can rewrite this log in exponential form. That would be 2 raised to the third power equals 8. And we know that to be true, that 2 multiplied 3 times does equal 8. So there you have it. Your solution is 7. Okay, so here we have an exponential equation. Um, now the first thing you want to do is see if you can uh, rewrite the equation to where they have uh, like common bases. And if so, you would be able to use the equality property and bring the exponents down. But since that's not the case, we can't uh, create common bases uh, with a 7 and a 12. Uh, so the next thing we should do is to rewrite the equation in logarithmic form and then use the change of base theorem. Recall the change of base theorem allows us to convert a log uh, to a common or natural log. So let's take a look at um, what we've been given in the original equation. Recall the base here is the big number, so the base is 7. The exponent that it's raised to is x, and it equals 12. So to write that as a log, it would be log base 7 of 12 equals x. And we can always do the snail-like pattern to check that 7 raised to the x equals 12. So now that we have it in logarithmic form, uh, we want to go ahead and rewrite it as a change of base. So remember, you can write it with the common log or uh, the natural log. So to write this uh, equation in that form, uh, what you'll have is uh, log 12 uh, divided by the log 7. Or you can also write it as uh, the natural log of 12 divided by the natural log of 7. Now, to do this, you're going to have to use your calculator because you're only going to be able to get an uh, approximation of that value. 
So go ahead and plug it in your calculator. I'll give you a minute to do so. And then I want you um, to tell me uh, the approximate value that you have. Okay, so you should have it by now. And uh, just a general approximation, rounding it uh, to the nearest thousandths place or to three decimal places, rather. Uh, what you're going to have is 1.277. Okay, so I'm going to show you an alternative method for solving uh, that same equation. Um, this time, let's use the properties of logarithms. Now, the properties of logarithms allows us to take the natural log or the common log of both sides. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we have the natural log of 7 to the x is equal to the natural log of 12. Our next step, we're going to use the power property to bring that x, that exponent x, out in front of the log. So let's go ahead and do that. When we do so, it's going to look like so. Our last step to solve in this equation for x, notice x is being multiplied on the left side with the natural log of 7. And so, you know, when you're solving equations, you have to do the opposite operation. So since it's being multiplied with x, we have to do the opposite operation, which is divide. We want to divide by what we want to get rid of. We want to keep x, and we want to get rid of the natural log of 7. So that is why we have to divide by the natural log of 7. And remember, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And so you'll get the same answer you got in the previous problems because recall when you get your calculator and you take the natural log of 12 divided by the natural log of 7, you're going to get a decimal approximation of 1.277. Number 3, 12 plus 2 times the natural log of x equals 14. Step one to solve in this equation would be to isolate the natural log on the side by itself. So right now it's on the side along with 12. Uh, so we need to move that 12 to the other side. To do so, we would have to subtract 12 from each side. Continuing on to isolate the natural log by itself, Right now, it's being multiplied with 2. So we have to do the opposite, which is divide by 2. Whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. Once we simplify it, we're left with the natural log of x equals 1. Now recall that the natural log has a base of e. So if the left side has a base of e, uh, so does the right, because uh, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So let's raise both sides to that. And then recall by the property of the inverse property of natural logs that e to the ln will cancel out to 1, leaving you with just simply x equals e to the first power. Number four, here we have the common log of x plus the common log of five equals one. We can begin this equation by rewriting the left side as a single log. So here we have two logs and they have the same common base. We can use the property of logarithms, the product property specifically, to rewrite the left side as a single log. So when we do so, what we're going to have is, because it then converts to multiplication of the logs, uh, the common log of 5x equals 1. Next step to solve in this is to rewrite it in exponential form. So recall common log has a base of 10, so that would be 10 raised to the 1 power. 
equals 5x. And last step to solving for x is to divide by 5 and x equals 2. Number 5. Log base 2 of x minus 1 plus log base 2 of x plus 1 equals 3. Notice the left side of the equation has two separate logs. We can rewrite them using the product property to write it as a single log. So let's go ahead and do that. Next, we want to rewrite the equation in exponential form, starting with the base, that would be two raised to the third power equals x minus one times x plus one. Notice the left side, the two binomials, is nothing more than a difference of square that's going to factor into x squared minus 1, and the right side is going to give you 8. Our next step to solving for x is to add 1 to each side. Now we need to take the square root of both sides in order to solve for x and x equals plus or minus 3. Let's test our solution here since we have both a negative and a positive solution. I want to make a point. So in plugging in a positive 3 into the original equation and checking our solution and do the math, we see that it does check because once we rewrite the logs uh, here to one single log. We have log base 2 of 8 equals 3, and that is correct. Now let's plug in a negative 3 into the original equation and see if it also leaves us with a true statement. Uh, so once we plug that in, we're going to get uh, negative 4 and uh, negative 2 and Recall that uh, logs cannot be uh, a negative. If the logarithm is of a negative number, it is undefined, so then you must throw out the solution. So in this equation, our answer or solution is just simply three. We have to throw out the negative. Number six, the natural log of 5x plus 7 minus the natural log of x equals the natural log of 6. So step one, we're going to rewrite the left side. Notice we have two separate logs. We're going to rewrite that as one single log. Recall that when you have uh, two logs with the same base being subtracted, uh, that you can rewrite them. Uh, using the quotient property, which means you're going to write it in fraction style of division, where on top you have 5x plus 7, and on bottom you have x. And by the uh, property of equality for logs, it states that if you have uh, two uh, logs on each side with the same base, uh, that you can use the property of equality to bring down uh, what he, we see here, which is 5x plus 7 over x is equal to 6. Our next step to solving for x is to clear the fraction. Uh, so we're going, you can either cross multiply or you can take the denominator and multiply both sides of the equation by x to clear that. So once we uh, cancel the x's, what we're left with is 5x plus 7 equals 6x. And then last step to solve in this equation would be to subtract 5x from each side and x equals 7. Number 7. Here we're given 8 times the natural number e raised to the 2x equals 20. Step 1 to solve in this equation would be to isolate the exponential term. 
Right now it's being multiplied with 8, so we have to get rid of 8. How do we do that? We do the opposite, which is divide by 8. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. Our next step to solving this is to take the natural log of both sides. Next, we're going to use the power property to move the 2x out front. Recall the inverse property of natural log states that we can cancel the natural log v. That's going to leave us with 2x equals the natural log of 2.5. Last step to solve this equation would be to divide by 2 and x equals the natural log of 2.5 over 2. Go ahead and plug that into your calculator and you're going to get approximate uh, decimal value to three places of 0 0.458. Number 8, 5 to the x is equal to 8 to the x minus 1. And since we cannot uh, create common like bases, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, use the property of logarithms and take the natural log of both sides. Next, we're going to use the power property to bring those exponents out front. On the right side of the equation, we can go ahead and distribute that x minus 1. So you're going to have x times the natural log of 8 and negative 1 times the natural log of 8. Our next step then is to uh, combine like terms. We need to get the x's on the same side. Uh, so let's subtract uh, x times the natural log of 8 from each side. On the right side, we can go ahead and factor out the common factor of x. And last step to solving for x, right now x is being multiplied with the natural log of 5 minus the natural log of 8. So we need to divide by that so that we can solve for x. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And we're done. x equals the negative natural log of 8 over the natural log of 5 minus the natural log of 8. And if you plug that into your calculator, you should get an approximate decimal value of 4.424. Now, this is the same problem as the previous. I just want to show that uh, the property of logarithms allows us to either take the natural log or the common log of both sides but in both cases you'll still wind up with the same answer so in doing that same problem uh, but taking the common log of both sides uh, will look like so you still will need to uh, use the power property to bring those exponents out front uh, once you do that again on the right side you're going to distribute uh, the x and the negative one once you do that, you need to combine like terms by moving your x terms on the side together, which means I would subtract uh, x times the common log of 8 from each side. Next, factor out the common factor of x on the left side. And then to solve for x, lastly, you would uh, divide by the common log of 5 minus the common log of 8. Uh, as I said before, once you plug that into your calculator, you'll find that you get the same exact answer. So again, you can either uh, take the common log of each side or the natural log of each side. 
Okay, so before we end this session, I want to give you an opportunity to see if you can do it on your own. So I want you to pause the video, see if you can complete this problem, uh, and then when you're ready to reveal the answer, restart the video. Okay, so what you should have gotten for the correct answer is D. Uh, so in case you wonder how you got D, let's see if we can go ahead and go over this problem real quick. Uh, so you have two logs on the left side. Uh, we can consolidate those into one single log uh, by using the quotient property. So notice they're being subtracted there. So that you know indicates that you would rewrite it using the quotient property of logs. So then what you'll have on the left side is a natural log of uh, 5x plus 1 over x plus 2. And on the right side, you have there the natural log of 3. Now recall with the uh, property of equality, uh, when you have uh, two logs, on, I mean, a log on each side, and they have the same base, uh, that allows you to bring down uh, x, 5x plus 1 over x plus 2, because that's going to be equal to 3. So from there, you can uh, crisscross multiply, or you can take the denominator and multiply both sides of the equation uh, by the denominator. I'm gonna go ahead and take the denominator, which is x uh, plus two, and I'm gonna multiply both sides by x plus two. So what that does is, when we cancel those x plus twos out, what we're going to be left with is 5x plus 1 is equal to 3 times x plus 2. And of course, we have to distribute on the right side. So that'll be 3x plus 6. And on the left side, you have 5x plus 1. We want to continue solving for x so we can subtract 3x from each side. Subtract 1. And what we'll have is 2x equals 5. Last step to solving for x is to divide by 2. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And as you can see here, uh, that x equals uh, 5 halves. And that is choice D. Number 10. So here's another practice problem. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can work it on your own. When you're ready to reveal the answer, restart the video. Okay, so let's see how you did on this one. Uh, here we have two logs on the left side. Uh, so we can consolidate those into one log. Because we see a plus sign, we're going to use the product rule, uh, which means we're going to multiply uh, x times 2x plus 1. So what we have on the left side is the common law of x times 2x plus 1. And on the right side, we'll have 1. Our next step to solving this uh, is to uh, rewrite this in exponential form. And notice common log has a base of 10. Uh, we don't write it. It's not written, but it's implied. When you don't see a log, you know it has a base of 10. So we can use the, uh, rewrite it as an exponential by writing it as the snail-like pattern raised to the x power equals x times 2x plus 1. So when we write that, what we're going to have is, again, uh, we're going to have x times 2x plus 1 on one side and 10 raised to the 1 power on the other. Now, we know that it doesn't matter. By raising uh, 10 to the 1 power, you're still going to get 10. So what you wind up having here, once you... Uh, due to the distributive property there, you're going to have uh, 2x squared plus x 
equals 10 and I'm going to go ahead and use the zero factor property to finish solving this for x so that would involve subtracting 10 from each side because recall the zero factor property get all your numbers on the left side and zero on the right the reason you do that is because you want to factor it so we're going to go ahead and factor uh, that trinomial into two binomials so of course we're going to have 2x in one and x in the other and then we want to um, find the pairs of numbers that give us the uh, negative 10 and at the same time uh, when you combine outer and inner it's going to give you a middle term of x and that's going to be with the 5 here and the 2 here and the 5 being positive and the 2 there being negative and now that we factored it uh, next is to take each parentheses and solve for x uh, so when we do so uh, the first equation we would need to subtract 5 from each side and that's going to give us 2x equals negative 5 last step divide by 2 and x equals negative 5 halves on the other one solving for x x equals 2 and you should know that um, recall when solving a logs uh, that the domain does not include any negative numbers so uh, we're going to have to go ahead and let me get another color for that throw out that negative uh, five halves which means that we'll have only one solution to that and that's x equals two uh, which is choice e Okay, that's it for this lesson. Inspirational quote of the day. The next time you're stressed, take a step back, inhale and laugh. Remember who you are and why you're here. You're never given anything in this world that you can't handle. So be strong, be flexible, love yourself and love others. Always remember, just keep moving forward. Thank you for watching math videos on PowerPoint with Dr. Spates. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.